in the history of what Marx is talking about this period of the 16th, 17th centuries. There's some fabulous accounts of the class struggles that went on around that, the levelers and the diggers and all those other elements in British society, which were violently resisting accumulation by dispossession. They were not yet in the wage labor force, but they were resisting the dispossession that was occurring to them. In fact, in the 17th and 18th century, the primary forms of class struggle were anti-proletarianization, were anti primitive accumulation or anti-dispossession. And the same thing works today. A lot of global struggles are being waged against dispossession. And this comes back to the question of which form of class struggle is going to be at the heart of any kind of revolutionary movement. Now I've made the argument in a brief history of neoliberalism, that capitalism since the 1970s under neoliberalism has not been very good at generating growth. Therefore, the immense quantities of money which have accumulated in the upper classes has almost certainly not come out of growth. A lot of it has come through accumulation by dispossession. And I would argue that there's much more accumulation by dispossession going on since the 1970s relative to what occurred in the 1950s and 1960s, even though in the 1950s and 60s it was there, no question, particularly in terms of robbery of resource and environmental transformations. But what we've seen is the resurgence of mechanisms dispossession in which the credit system, which Marx mentions here as a primary vehicle for this, the credit system has become the cutting edge for accumulation by dispossession. What is going on in the subprime mortgage crisis? What we're seeing is people losing their homes. Who are losing their homes? Relatively poor people majority African-American or Hispanic, highly concentrated in certain zones of, the, of certain cities. This high concentration of foreclosures is a massive dispossession which is infecting, of course, the whole financial system. And you might like to think that, oh, well, at least some of the people on Wall Street are being hurt. But actually, I don't know if you've noticed something, but all of those leaders, Merrill Lynch and Citibank and so on, who've been forced to step down, they kept every penny of the remuneration they had during all those years when they were backing this mortgage and subprime mortgage bonanza. And not only that, as they step down, they get a golden handshake worth $100 million dollars. Whereas a poor person in Cleveland who leaves, loses their home gets nothing. This is the dynamics of accumulation by dispossession. And part of my argument would be that the political struggles against accumulation by dispossession are just as important as the traditional proletarian movements have been. But traditional proletarian movements in the unions, and then the political parties which have sprung, sprung out of that have not been very cognizant of or even concerned with accumulation by dispossession. So when you hear about the World Social Forum or you go to any of the World Social Forums, what you're likely to hear is a lot of talk about accumulation by dispossession and quite a lot of antagonism towards traditional union forms of organization. So that you'll find in Brazil, for example, that an organization which is against dispossession, that is the Brazilian landless peasants movement, is not necessarily in alliance with the PT, the Workers' Party, which has a more kind of traditional urban proletarian base. 
And part of my argument would be to say, if Rosa Luxemburg is right and there's an organic relation between these two forms of accumulation, and if the history of capitalism is about these two forms of accumulation working together, then we have to look at our contemporary era in that way. But we also have to construct the idea of an oppositional force. If you like, an oppositional force of the dispossessed. Workers who are dispossessed of surplus capital in the labor process. And people who are being dispossessed of their assets, their rights, through accumulation by dispossession elsewhere. And I think the idea that comes out of Marx that primitive accumulation is simply in the prehistory is erroneous and has to be modified into a different configuration if we're to come up with any kind of politics uh, of the current moment. But then I would argue this was true even back then. And Mao recognized that when he started to talk about peasant worker alliances. Gramsci recognized that when he started to talk about the northern bloc alliance with the southern bloc alliance. In other words, there is a history within Marxism of taking these kinds of ideas seriously. And I would want to push them even further than they've been taken historically because I think this is a terribly important conjuncture to get the idea of who <coughs> the dispossessed are and what political possibilities come out of their mobilization is crucial for finding ways out of the current impasse as to what capitalism is about.